have a unique message for us today that will give us hope. As I was praying about this week's message, and uh, God just dropped in us hope. Hope. So, Father, you are the God of all hope. You are the God of all comfort. And so right now I pray that, that you would come and quicken the words today. Let your words be alive inside of us. Not just a, with a hearing. I speak unto your spirit that you will hear the word of the Lord with your spirit. And not just your head or your ears. I speak into your spirit. You will hear. You will understand. The word will come alive. You will perceive. You will understand. And the word will be confirmed in your life with hope and peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the book of Luke chapter 21, verse 25, says that uh, there will be distress of nations with perplexities. And then verse 25, 6 says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. Men's hearts failing them for fear. And with the trouble and the perplexities that's coming on the earth. Again, the scripture says, that which will be shaken, or can be shaken, will be shaken. Until that stands, which will be firm. So I was thinking about this this week and praying about this message. What would give us hope? And uh, on our Sunday night, in our Sunday night school of the Holy Spirit, we've been uh, memorizing scriptures and then meditating upon them. And one of the scriptures that we memorized and were meditating upon was Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. In fact, next to the Lord's Prayer, most people know the 23rd Psalm, or the as we call it, the Lord is my shepherd. But I want us to not only meditate upon it, but I want it to look at this, how this affects our life, because one of the things we see, David was a shepherd, and he knew the concepts of protection and provision given by the shepherd. And so that's why when David wrote this uh, 23rd Psalm, he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now I throw this out to you. If the Lord, and when this word Lord is Jehovah God, if God, and we were singing, uh, again, Maritza, thank you for picking the songs you picked today. Uh, Be strong the Lord, and He is our God, and, and all these. If He, Jehovah God, is our shepherd, we have no wants. I want you to let that just sink in. Is the Lord your shepherd? My God, Jehovah God. And, and in the Old Testament, he gives the uh, names of Jehovah Shalom and Shalom Arifi. And, and, of, and one of them is, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. But we're going to be looking at the Psalms, what a shepherd does and why you have no needs. And how, why he, you will have no needs, he will meet all your needs. But another good thing, when Jesus came to earth... Man, God manifested in the flesh and he walked. In John chapter 10, what did Jesus say? I am the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. And he says, I will meet all your needs. Then listen to this. Not only now, with the Lord Jehovah God, not only with Jesus when he was on earth, but listen to this right now. The word pastor actually means shepherd. And if you are in a congregation, and you actually have a shepherd, you have no needs because he can guide and help you and direct you unto Jehovah God or unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will have no needs. You will have no lacks. So I want you to say that within yourself. The Lord is my shepherd. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus is your shepherd. But then he appoints under shepherds under him also to meet your daily needs also. So you you do not have anything that's worth facing on earth that God can't meet. Now let's look at what they are. Now we have three categories here. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Now, for His name's sake, in other words, His name is at stake. The Lord or God being a good shepherd, His name and reputation is at stake if He is not a good Lord and He's not a good shepherd. Does that make sense? For His namesake, He is the good shepherd. Now what does He do? First of all, He provides for us. The first thing He does, being a good shepherd, He provides for all our needs. When He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Because He provides everything I need. And the first one is that He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Sheep are unique animals. <laughs> they are unique animals. For them to lay down, things have to be just right in their, in their pasture or around them. There are actually basically four things that they... That, to have a sheep lay down in rest and tranquility and peace, first of all, they have to, fear has to be removed. If there's anything that comes near them that makes them nervous or afraid of things that are happening, you will not find sheep laying. If they're anxious, if they're anxious about something, they will not lay down and rest because they are fearful and filled with anxieties. Have you gone through things in your life that creates fear and anxieties and removes peace from you? Think of your life recently. What have you been afraid of? And you've been fearful over. And the only reason we do that is because why? We look at what's happening in the world and what's going around us, and it brings panic into us and fear into us, and it even affects us at night. Not only laying down, he says, my, my people sleep, sleep is given to my people, and there's rest in it. But have you been through fearful things and looking at the economy or life situations that's robbing your sleep or even laying down and rest? Sheep will not do that. They will not lay down and rest if they're fearful and afraid and anxious. Secondly, if there is a bully around, if you have a you that, that uh, is, is, is harassing the flock, and they come up and they call it budding. And, and when they're there, they're, sometimes there's a you that comes and keeps budding them, and even the young ones. And when you find this, a you in, in, the, in the flock that's coming around and, and harassing and budding them, the sheep are not restful because why? This you comes after them and, and creates chaos and confusion, so they don't, again, there's no rest and there's no peace in them. And we can find that in our society today that we feel threatened by people or circumstances that come against us and we feel personal. Have you recently been personally attacked and you've been afraid and you react and it robs your peace? It could be, it could be in a work situation. Maybe you're in a work situation and you feel threatened about your job security, but if you look around, it's really people. It's really people vying, or culturally, or even what take in our government now, in our world situation. We have fear, and we have no rest, because we watch the news media, and we see people coming in, and we have fears of people coming and attacking us, and, and we lose our rest, and we can't lay down in, in the green pastures and rest, and that's what's happening. But again, we need to look unto the Lord, our shepherd, if God is with us, and He's in control, and we don't have to trust in our own security and our own rest, then we have it made. Thirdly, they will not rest if there's flies or parasites or ticks that are ravaging their bodies because what happens, these flies come around and get up their nose and then they lay eggs in their nose and then they, they turn the worms and crawl up and even go into their brain and into their system and it harasses them and lots of times you see sheep, you don't see them, 
Only they would see them because they're the only shepherds here. But, but what happens, those that say they have uh, the parasites or these flies or these ticks come in and you see the sheep and they're always thrashing their heads around trying to get these, these flies and larvae and now the worms out of their heads and they can't rest. So they can't go down and rest and they can't lay in green pastures. And so things, and there's lots of things that come in war against disease, for instance, sicknesses. How many? Look at look at look at most of the prayer requests we have in our body. Sicknesses, our uh, cancer, heart attacks, prostrate. I mean, uh, listen to the re- prayer prayer requests we have. Just about every one of the prayer requests we have in our church is physical afflictions. And when we are sick, and when we are attacked, and when the when our bodies are afflicted, we cannot rest. Why? Because we have fear. We don't can't rest because we think we're going to die. We think these things are going to destroy us. And then fourthly. They don't lay down and rest in green pastures. Why? Because they're hungry. If they're hungry and they aren't fed, then they have to have food. So, so the thing is, if they're hungry, they're always looking around at where they're going to eat next. And so if they're hungry, sheep cannot lay down and rest. They're always looking to eat. So when it talks about, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, Why? Because the shepherd's with them, and he leads them, and he meets all these needs. The good shepherd, why, does the, why do they not have fear? Because he's with them. He's with them. And he says, he, then also it says, he leads them besides the still waters. Sheep, if they go and drink stagnant water, and there's bad water, they can drink things and get poisoned out of their water uh, because 70% of them, uh, of their bodies are water. And so they drink this water and it goes into their system if it's stagnant. And they also can't drink when it's ro- running too full fast because shepherds, what they do, this, well, here's what the shepherds do. They go and check out the pools to see that it's not stagnant or have stuff in it. And they also dam up the water so it's not flowing too fast so that they, besides the still waters, brings peace to them. I love some of these songs we were singing today. Maritza always picks good songs recently because uh, give thanks because he brings peace and tranquility on us. God, now here's what you need. If you're going through these things, and things are stressing you, and you can't, or you can't rest, and you can't. You're you're fearful, you're afraid, you have sicknesses, you're you're concerned about your well-being and your daily substance. What did Jesus say? Jesus, I he he stood up and cried. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. As the scriptures have said, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. There are people today in our midst. But I'm talking to Christians now because the Lord is our shepherd. And if you find yourself, you're just not being satisfied and there's a longing within you for things. Jesus says, come to me. I am the living water. I give my body for you. I've given myself. Oh, everyone that thirsts. Let him come unto me and drink without money or without... See, the Lord is my shepherd. I want to check your life out now. Can you have rest? He says, can you have rest? What are you afraid of? Check it out. <clears throat> what, what are you afraid of? Is there a bully? Are you fearful of your, your security or your provision? Sicknesses in within our bodies? and a longing and a desire to be satisfied. There's an empty and a void in your life, whether it's food or whether it is drink. I'm telling you that you need to come to the Lord who is your shepherd because He leads you into the paths of righteousness. Now what does... In John 10, John 10, when Jesus was talking about being a shepherd, He says, My sheep hear My voice and they follow Me. Another voice they will not follow. Another shepherd they will not follow. Is the Lord your shepherd? I want you to look at your life. The economy we're living in. 
the society that we live in, the environment that's coming against us, everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. The Scripture says that. Men's hearts failing them for fears. But why should Christians be in a situation that we act like the world? We act like there's no God and there's no hope. And check yourself out and listen to people at work and those around you. Are you talking as bad as they are? Then, then where's your shepherd? Then where, who is your God? Who is your shepherd? If the Lord is my shepherd, I have no want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He leads me in the paths of right. Who are you following? See, one thing about sheep, you don't drive them. It says the sh- they follow the sheep, shepherd. They follow the shepherd. They hear his voice. They follow the shepherd. They're not like a lot of others that you drive. <clears throat> He, <clears throat> for His namesake. God's name is at stake. Is the Lord our shepherd and do we live like that? If not, let's look unto the shepherd and come back to Him and say, Lord, You are my shepherd. Oh my God, You are my shepherd. And let me throw this in just as a side issue. That's why God has church, a congregation of believers, not a building and not a denomination, a group of believers, but that's why God has placed in the body pastors. We used to have people that uh, they said they didn't need church, they didn't need to be part of a church, they don't need to be part of a congregation, and they just love God and serve God. And that's good. You don't have to have a church. You don't have to be in a denomination. You don't have to have a body of believers to be saved. But I used to say to them, when you have a death in your family, who are you going to call? If you have an issue in your marriage and you have an issue in your family, who are you going to call? Who's, who's your pastor? Well, I think I'll just look in the yellow pages and call someone up. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. That's why God places pastors on the earth so that a body of believers and they can feel watched over and cared for. The second group, the second group is protection. Look at these, verse, verse 4. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you're with me. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what happens with these shepherds? They would would take the the sheep from lower uh, pastures, and then in the summertime, they would take them up on the mountains, on the tablelands, in the flat areas, and the shepherds. But what the shepherd would do first, while it is still time where the sheep are grazing in there, what he would do, he would go up the trail through the, uh, the ravines and through the, up to the, what they call table lands or mesas, and they would, that's where they would take their sheep then up in the summertime where they could graze so that they didn't graze everything away and, and eat all the grass. So, but what the shepherd would do, he would go up there first. He would go up there first, And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because what would happen up the trails and up these things up through the mountains to these plateaus or mesas or tableland, he would check it out first. Then when he would go, he would go and take them through. Why? Because he scoped it out first. And I'm telling you, the shepherd scopes it out first. He takes you through these trails in your life situations where you are fearful and you are afraid and the enemies. Now here's another thing. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Because sometimes going up these trails, some of the sheep could fall over and be killed. Or they would get tangled in the woods or prefaces. And, and, so, and so that's where the staff comes in. What, what, there's two things here, a rod and a staff. Two different things. A rod was a rod that they would literally 
take out and they would go out and pull out a tree with a with a and it, the actual word rod means out of a root. That's what the word rod means. Out of a root, and they would take it out. And you can have it in uh, Africa and the shepherds or or Australia or New Zealand. And what they would do, they would get rods and they would personalize it, but it would have like a a a, a club on the end, and it was a rod. And then they had a staff, two different parts. The, see, a lot of us, when we read this, we would think the rod and the staff was the same thing, but it wasn't. The, 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 the rod was something for protection and deliverance from prey and stuff. And what they would use the rod, and what they would do, they would learn to beat that when David killed the lion and the bear. That's what he used, the rod. He used the rod, not the staff. The staff, what they would use, it was a long thing. And lots of times the shepherds, when he's watching over the flock, he would lean on his staff and watch. But he also used the staff going up the trail or through the valleys, and, and he would nudge the sheep, touch them on the sides to keep them away. Or if they did get caught in case sometimes, he, he couldn't get down there and he would pick them up with the, the, the staff. So two different things. One was for protection, and one was for leading and guiding and direction. And the reason we do not fear when you're going up that is because the, the shepherd is with us going through. Now, look at your life. The tough things you're going through. Things you may fear. Now remember we talked about being affected by the death and disease, most of the time, most of the time when somebody's dying, we always talk about the valley of the shadow of death. But let me tell you something. For Christians, the valley of the shadow of death is not fearful. Death is not fearful to the Christian. Why? Because the Lord is with us through that transition path and He takes the staff of His love and the staff of His shepherd and guides us away from the prefaces of falling off or He guides us through the danger area. And where we go through the valley of the shadow of death because we're all going to face that, death of a Christian is different than death of a sinner. The death of a Christian is because God leads us through that valley and brings us into a new life and a new experience. So whether it's in our daily life experiences, I want you to know that if you're facing an adversary, how the shepherd protects them, but when Jesus came to earth, what did Jesus do? He came to to set the captive free, but he also came to, to encounter the devil and defeat us from the enemy. And, and Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil because it says in the book of John, chapter 10, about the shepherd, the good shepherd comes and gets his life. Verse 10 says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. So I want you to know, when you're going through life experience, which we're going through now, is the Lord your shepherd. It's Jesus Christ, your own personal shepherd. And do you have a shepherd to watch over you and pastor you now, too? Because what the shepherd does and what Jesus does, Jesus gives shepherds to the people, and, now, and that's what a pastor does. He watches over and helps through the areas. Because Paul was telling Timothy, he said, there's going to be uh, wolves coming in among you. When I leave you, there's going to be... So when Paul was writing, you can find this in the Timothy's and Titus, and even John said this. But we can be secure in this. Why? Because, first of all, the Lord is my shepherd. Jesus Christ is my Savior, and I have a pastor to be under because He guards and guides. One of the things that people always said to us in Massachusetts, in that area we lived in, they said we always felt secure over us because you watched over us. We always felt secure with you as our pastor because you always watched over us. Because we told you some of the stories of things we encountered there. They said we felt because you were our pastor, we felt secure. Now, thirdly, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You prepare a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Well, what happens when 
the shepherds would now take them up to these tablelands or mesas, as they called them, to have them. The, the, the sheep would feel secure because why? This is what happens. Why does the shepherd go up there? Because he goes up there and checks out where he's going to put his flock. That's why he goes up before them. The shepherd goes up before them to prepare a place for them in the presence of the enemy. Well, one thing, he, they didn't have to worry about the enemy, whether it was a cougar or a wolf or whatever it was, because they had the club. And, and they felt secure. And when, when that's why the shepherd would be there with them, watching over the flock. They felt secure because the shepherd always watched over the flock and watched the state of the flock. And we saw something happening within the flock of sheep. The restlessness. They weren't laying down. They were skittish. They were running. They were fearful. They were afraid. The shepherd would then watch over them in the presence. And if, and if he saw it like David, a bear or a lion, or Jesus said, I've come to destroy the works of the devil. When Peter was going through a difficulty, and Jesus said to Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as weak, but I've prayed for you that you fail not. And when Peter failed, after the, after the death of Jesus, and Jesus appeared unto Peter, remember when they were out uh, 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 around the lake, and Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. But when he said, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, I phileo you. I love you as a friend. So then Jesus asked him the second time, Peter, do you love me? And again, Peter says, yes, Lord. Because remember, Peter had just failed. Peter had just failed Jesus by denying and even cursing and saying, I don't even know him. And many times we go through those kind of situations. If we have failed God, and if we have sinned, and we have come short of the glory of God. The second time Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, Lord, I still phileo love you. Jesus asked him the third time, Peter, do you really love me? And he felt so bad, and he says, Lord, you know all things. You know how I loved you, but I failed you. He says, Peter, I love you. Now, go feed my sheep. <laughs> go feed my sheep. So the beautiful thing is, go feed my sheep. So, so one of the things when we fail. Now, getting back up here to the first section where God, he, he restores my soul. What happens when, uh, when we fail God? He restores my show, soul. Lots of times, sometimes when sheep uh, go through experiences, they will lay down in green pastures, but then if they're not careful, they'll fall in a hole or a, a hill or a thing, and they'll roll over on their back, and they can't get up. They call it casting. So here this, this, the sheep is now laying on its back, kicking its feet, kicking its feet, and and because it can't get up because of the way they're built and the way they, because now they're laying on their back and if they're laying on their back they can't really get over and if it's hot weather like over in Africa and some of the other countries in one day they can die but but it, what lots of happens in some of these other countries where it's more cool and the sheep fall over and they cast what happens the eagles and buzzards come down and begin to pluck them and eat them while they're alive and, and attack them while they're alive. And so when it says, He restores my soul up here in this one, and even in the presence of my enemies, what happens, the good shepherd is watching over his flock. And if he's leaning on his shepherd's staff, or he watched the conditions of his flock, he sees this, this one, of the, one of the shepherds says, what he usually do, used to watch the buzzards fly around. And if he saw the buzzards flying around, he knew something was, was either dead or dying over there because he saw the buzzards. And he would run out to his fields and check it out. And if there was a, a, a lamb or a ewe uh, cast it, 
uh, laying on his back and couldn't get up, he would quickly run over, and what they would do, he would pick it up. But it depends how long they were standing there. They couldn't stand. They couldn't stand. And so he would hold it there and rub the legs. And then and they had to massage the legs in the, because it depends how long they laid there. And so, so what happens, see, you prepare a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Now, preparing the table, also uh, the table plateau, when that's what it was talking about, the mesa or table land. The shepherd would go up, look at where he was going to pasture his sheep, the different places, but he would also walk through the, the pasture area, and if there were storms or if there were poison in there, they would pull it out. Because if the little lambs ate some of these, they would do. And also, the reason they had to go to... The, because what happened, the sheep themselves would eat the grass down so far, even getting down to the roots, that the, the pastures became desert land, or it was of no value. And so therefore, if the sheep didn't have good grazing land, then they would eat other stuff. It would hurt them. So the shepherds, in the midst of their enemies, would come and pray. Now, that's what God does for you. I'm telling you, that in the midst of your life situations, God prepares for you a place of rest. And then not only that, He anoints my head with oil. Now, this is what happens. Remember I told you about the flies and the parasites and the ticks? And if He sees His sheep out there thrashing its head around and it's not resting... He would go and check it out, and if he found out there was larva and flies at their nose, what he would do, he would take oil. I forget the other two things they mixed with it. <laughs> but anyhow, and he would swab the nose of the sheep to get out this flies, larva, and stuff, but they would also anoint their nose, nose that the flies wouldn't bother them, but they would also go out, and they would anoint the sheep, that one says, so they would anoint my head with oil, and they get rid of the ticks and stuff. So that's what a shepherd does. And I'm telling you, that for sickness, and there's disease, and there's things that rob in your health, and it's bringing destruction into your life. I'm telling you and reminding you from this scripture that we all have memorized or, or even quoted it, but I'm telling you to make this personal. I'm saying make this personal. The Lord is my shepherd. And then in closing he says, and I surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Why? Because the shepherd's there. It shall, I get the goodness and the mercies of the Lord. Why? Because I bring Him as my shepherd. If you go after another shepherd, you're going to be robbed. Because the Bible says he, the thief comes in. This is Jesus talking. The thief comes in and robs and steals and destroys. But if you make Him the Lord of your life, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Now check your life out. Check your Christian experience. Are you fearful? Are you afraid? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Get into God. Get the Word of God in you. Jesus, my, my spirit and my, my words, my words are spirit in life. If you're hungry and thirsty, more of Him. Eat more of Him. Now here in closing, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's not talking about a house. That's talking about a flock. And I will dwell with my flock. I won't be wandering off into the world to look for other things that satisfy, but I will dwell in the flock of my God. I will be in this flock, and I won't be looking... One of the, one of the uh, stories and commentaries that I was reading was by Philip Keller, who in 1970 wrote a book about shepherding and sheep. That's where I got most of this information from. And he said when he was shepherding in, uh, I forget what country it was, <clears throat> they had a hireling for a shepherd. And on the farm next to his, they had this guy that rented his land out to this guy that was a shepherd, but he was a hireling. And he says he didn't take care of, of his flock. And his sheep, on the next farm, <clears throat> ate the field so down 
uh, that they had ruts and they had trails. He says, the, uh, lead me in the paths of righteousness. But in this, the sheep, sheep keep going the same direction and they keep eating at the same place if you don't move them. So they'll, 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 they'll make the, the pasture into nothing. He made it into nothing. nothing. <clears throat> so he said he always watched over his and every so often he would switch fields so that they wouldn't destroy the pasture land, and the sheep would get fed good. Well, the, on the farm next to his, <clears throat> I think it was in New Zealand or somewhere like that, near the ocean, <clears throat> that they would have fences. And the sheep on the other field would come and stand at the fence and look over at his sheep and their pasture. These sheep would line up along the fence. And when the ocean would go out, and the tide would go out, where the fence ended, these sheep from these other would go around the fence and come over into his pasture land. And he says he remembers one time when uh, this happened that three of them were so decimated and because he saw them laying in his pasture and, and they came around, but they laid in, and they were so emancipated and dead. So he said he went, picked it, and there was three of them. He picked them up, loaded them on a wheelbarrow, drove them to this farmer who was next door, this hireling, and uh, he says, here's three sheep that came into my pasture and they're almost dead. Here, they're your sheep. And he said, that farmer, that farmer went over, got a knife and cut their throat and killed them and butchered them before they were dead. He says, that's how he loved his flock. He says, if that was my sheep, I would pick them up, I would take them in, I would care for them myself, I would, you know, when they curled, he would pick them up. He says, if I caught sheep that were emancipated or something was wrong with them or hurt or, the, or something attacked them, he says, I would nurture them to bring them back to life. He says, but the, and Jesus said, that's what the thief and robber does. That's what the world does. Don't trust the world. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Let's just stand and praise.